How you doing, folks? Well, um, in the previous video um, that I've actually uploaded, uh, you would have seen me um, trying to start this beetle behind me, okay? Now, this is a 1974 beetle that my friend Darren picked up, and um, it's been sitting up for a little while. So, um, we had a bit of fun with it, just trying to um, get it to start and uh, see, what, uh, see what it's like superficially. But, that's not where we were going to stop. Today what we're going to do is we're going to get into the details on it and we're actually going to find out what does this car need in order for it to run and drive safely and uh, t so basically what we need to do is we need to look at the engine, the gearbox, the drivetrain, suspension, steering and brakes. Okay. But first, what we need to do is we need to start taking a few bits off the engine that I want to overhaul anyway because if you remember, one of the issues we had was um, that the engine would start, yes, but it was difficult to start and it wouldn't stay running, so it cut out straight away. So we need to find out why that is. They're a fairly simple engine. You're basically looking at um, ignition and uh, carburetor. Okay, um, we'll also need to look at the, the um, situation with the um, valve clearances, but uh, that's all part of the service in which we will also be doing. Okay, um, I am starting to see why uh, Hubnut um, finds it really annoying that people make an awful lot of noise in the um, in the unit that he's in when they're outside um, because I'm having exactly the same problem here myself. By the way, if you don't follow Hubnut, um, you really do need to, he's brilliant. Um, so uh, yeah, um, I, I'm a huge fan of his videos. But uh, anyway, that aside, uh, let's have a look at this engine because um, straight away uh, it's looking pretty sorry for itself, okay? This carry-on here, I don't know what in the name of God that was made of. I mean, heat riser tubes are not exactly expensive. Um, that one's held on with a piece of uh, electrical wire going around the coil. The rear tin is missing completely, which uh, if the engine is used for any great amount of time, without that rear tin, uh, it causes the engine to overheat basically because the engine is sucking in the uh, sucking in the hot air that is discharged underneath the car um, instead of sucking in the nice cool air from the top of the uh, engine bay. One of the lads um, in the uh, yard here uh, just stopped in and um, if I've heard the story once, I've heard it a hundred times about ten lads, ten lads in the back of a beetle, um, all going off down to the GAA matches and that as well too. But nice chap though, all the same. But obviously, um, you know, you, you tend to you tend to get chatting to people when you have a classic VW. And to be honest with you, you wouldn't want to be a um, shy or anything like that. And I certainly am not um, Hence why I'm making YouTube videos. But anyway, uh, back to the task at hand. Let's have a let's have another look at this. But yeah, as I said, I never have a try. I never have a problem getting chatting to people. So uh, anyway, right. So the first things we need to do is we need to get rid of these shonky old yokes, get them out of our way, um, and I'll pull the distributor cap. We'll have a look at that. That fuel filter has to go. But one of the big things we're going to be doing here is we're going to re going to be replacing all of the fuel lines in the uh, car with proper um, or nine rated fuel hose, uh, proper stuff, not cheap Chinese rubbish, um, and make sure it's all safe. Then we need to get an air cleaner get that rear tin replaced. I'm looking at the exhaust, it's looking pretty crusty down there as well too, so uh, I would say we probably will have to do something with that as well. Um, but uh, maybe a nice stock exhaust and a pair of heat exchangers might be the job on this car, but sure we'll have a look and see. Okay, right, now let's get stuck in here. Okay. That's one of them off. We'll get this one off here now as well too. The main thing is no no rear tin, you don't really have to worry too much about the preheater tubes. Jubilee clip will keep that. <laughs> one of uh, four that should be on it, but anyway. Um one of the things that Darren was telling me on this car as well too was the fact that the uh, the car uh, the car had a tendency to cut out, and uh, when you have a beetle cutting out all the time and it won't idle, a lot of the time it's because these um, pipes that come up uh, here from the exhaust on either side of the engine bay um, get blocked, and uh, they're they're uh, heat riser pipes, and because you have such a long manifold on a beetle, the um, the tendency is for the uh, um, the, the uh, manifold to freeze. Uh, because of vacuum uh, pressure differential, uh, so um, we'll, we, what we'll do is we'll actually take off the um, inlet manifold as well. It's a fiddly job, but sure look, we're, we're here to fix the car, so we may as well. Let's have a look and see how we're looking. The, uh, the old uh, distributor cap. 
it doesn't look to be too crusty and the rotor arm is pretty good as well too so we might uh you know what I think of it maybe we might just stick a set in um well, that been said, they do look like they've been done recently, so maybe uh, maybe somebody replaced them in the pursuit of um, running problems in this instance. Now, so as not to uh, upset the timing on this engine, what we're going to do is we're going to leave the... Uh, there's a clamp on the on the back of the distributor here, um, back is the back of the car, you know, so you would think, you would think I'd be saying the front, but no, the back, so that's this side. Um, there's a nut that holds on that clamp along with the distributor further in and um, so what we'll do is we'll rotate the engine around to a uh, uh, number one cylinder top dead center okay now see straight away you've got one different uh, HT lead as well too so I think what we'll do is we'll stick a set of leads on our as well too so what way was this now this was my yellow lead is going to number two uh, number one so if one right in the back to uh, yeah, no, I was right the first time, so one's at the back, then two, and three is at the back over this side, and then four. Remember, it's flat four engine, folks. So, okay, so that yellow lead is going to number one cylinder, okay? I'm going to kind of get it to top dead center at number one, so I'm going to rotate it. Turn it around, and we're looking for a notch in the, fly, or in the, the pulley, which is there. So, you can see there now. There's our notch, and that lines up with the split in the case. So that's our, that's our timing mark. So I, I just want to actually leave it at the timing mark. Um, so, uh, so let's leave it at that. Now, to be honest with you, as I was rotating that engine, it felt like it had solid all compression. But there again, if it's been sitting up for a while, that might be, that might be the reason there. Let's get that nut off back there. It's a bit fiddly. You know something that... I constantly hear about people going on saying, oh, you could remove a beetle engine in half an hour, it's only four bolts. Yeah, you can remove a beetle engine in half an hour, it's only four bolts. If you have a garage and a pit and you have all of the facilities and everything as well too, that's number one. Number two is the fact that you have to remove the engine to do anything on the bloody things. Whereas like, on a normal engine, you can remove the cylinder head without taking the engine out. Whereas in a beetle, you can't remove the cylinder head or anything without taking the engine out. You know, even changing the alternator on a Beetle is a hassle because I know you have the alternator there, you've also got the fan on the back of it and the fan tends to get in your way. Now let's disconnect our points from the coil. Take that out of the way. I've already disconnected the uh, battery by the way folks, so I uh, don't need to worry about me working on electrics. Now, there we go. So there's the distributor out and you can see now the clamp is still in place so that basically means that our timing is uh, not going to be upset. Now, obviously I'm going to be doing the timing at some stage, but at least we kind of, we know we're in the ballpark, so long as we don't rotate the engine. Even if you do rotate the engine, you uh, you go back to, um, you, you go back to top dead center on uh, number one cylinder. So that's, uh, so that's that out of the way. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the carburetor. So um, we'll, uh, we'll start by taking the um, vacuum pipes off. Uh, our, um, Fuel cut off and electronic choke. The electronic choke is banjaxed. So uh, it's not electronic, it's electric, it's actually a heater element and basically as it heats up there, it opens the choke. Um, so when the engine's cold, the choke is closed, it's hot, it heats up, it's a bimetallic coil. It's actually very clever how they do it, but in this instance it's bunched. So uh, uh, yeah, so we will need to be uh, addressing that at some stage as well too, to be honest with you. I may strip this carburetor before I order a, uh, a rebuild kit because there's no point in getting a rebuild kit for a carburetor that's past uh, past saving. So I'm take the take the accelerator cable out. So that just pulls out there, and then we'll keep our um, what do you call it? A barrel cl barrel clip or ferrule or whatever the hell you call them. I can never remember. I'm gonna actually just put it back onto the accelerator cable for the moment. We just nip it up so that doesn't go missing. Because uh, you see, you need a, I'm going to need to look at a, a spring um, for the uh, accelerator pedal linkage. Right, so that's that. Now let's take that fuel line off. 
let's have a look and see what sort of state these fuel lines are in. Well that's loose anyway for a start. What we'll be doing is replacing all of the Jubilee clips with proper hose connectors as well too. And then this one on the top of the carburetor I will be lock wiring in place because what can happen sometimes is the brass fitting pops out of the carb. Um, now let's let's see how we're looking with the with the fuel um, fuel hose. As this is a as I said, it is a major problem with uh, beetles, particularly because the engines are that much more prone to uh, going on fire because they run hotter. Um, it actually, the, the fuel hose there from superficially doesn't look bad, but that's not to say that we won't be replacing it. You'd be mad not to. Okay, so that's, that's our fuel hose out of the way. Um, and take our nut off the front, first of all. This looks like it is the manifold from a van rather than a car, and the reason I know that is because there's a takeoff for the um, there's a takeoff for the, the uh, manifold uh, the, the servo, the vacuum servo. So um, yeah, that will uh, maybe be something we might address. Uh, to be honest with you, if it's working though, we might just leave it be. If we can get one though, so much the better. Um, I was thinking those heat riser tubes look that, that bit bigger as well too. Maybe they are bigger in a van, I actually couldn't tell you to tell you the truth now. Okay. The nut on the back is a bit fiddly. Okay. Oh god, they didn't. Yes they did. Big gob of bloody RTV sealant all the way around the base of the carb rather than using the proper gasket. For God's sake, people. Right. Bodge artists. And the threads are stripped out of the bottom of the carb. And there's like an adapter on it as well too, so what we'll be doing is maybe um, We'll, we'll use some chemical metal to stick that stud in place or whatever and we can uh, see uh, see how we get on, but uh, that's straight away, that's the wrong manifold for this engine. Now, this engine happens to be a an AS engine, so... Hmm. Need to have a look at that, looks like there may be... Oh, God. <laughs> There's been some amount of playing going on with this, I can assure you folks. It's like there's a, a loop back for a full flow oil filter on this, uh, but there's no full flow oil filter on it. Um, so yeah, anyway, let's uh, let's keep going. Um, so what we will do is um, get all those fuel lines out of the way first of all. A little bit of fuel is going off. Spill out there, but as long as you're careful, you'll be all right. And what we will use is an M8 bolt just to stop the fuel from spilling everywhere. For the moment, obviously, I mean, it's all, it, as I explained to you, well, <laughs> fuel isn't spilling out. Okay, fair enough then. Let's leave it be for the moment. Now it's one of the things that people put a uh, people put the fuel filter in the engine bay for uh, for ease of access and changing and that as well too, thinking that it's the right thing to do. But it's most certainly not the right thing to do because the fuel filter is a point of failure, and you don't want a point of failure in the engine bay where everything is hot. What you do is you put the fuel filter up the front of the car, and uh, that keeps it away from um, away from sources of ignition. Um, so.
vacuum pipe will get replaced as well too. Now what I want to do is I want to replace the um, I want to replace the uh, or remove the uh, manifold. But the easiest thing to do in order to remove the manifold is actually take the alternator off in, order, in the process. So let's see if we can do that. This just pulled up outside. Pretty smart looking car, I have to say. Very straight. Dunny Gall Reg, so it's had the stones driven off it, but um, yeah, um, that's uh, par for the course, really. But no, it's, uh, it's nice. We'll have to get that out for a spin sometime now. And we're back! That's okay. Jay Leno style there. Jay Leno's Garage, another great TV program, actually. I really enjoy it. Um, so we're going to take off the uh, take off the alternator if we can, um, and uh, basically the way you adjust the alternator belt on these is you, you have to shim out the pulley and uh, by putting shims in between the, the two halves of the pulley moves it in or out, meaning the belt either rides higher or lower, um, and uh, it works to be honest with you. Um, there's you, you find those type of uh, pulleys on. Um, other uh, other cars as well too. I've never seen one with these slots in it. Now mind. I have to say, uh, people with a lot more experience with these things than me. Yeah. Oh, there we go. Right. So that's so that's the belt off. Obviously, we're going to be changing the belt. Uh, it's looking pretty shiny. So, another thing for the scrap pile. Um, so, I will take some photos of the wiring of the alternator on my phone. I know the alternator is working, so uh, that's a bonus. Uh, somebody out in the main road out there on a full send, as we call it around here. Yeah. You know what, folks? We have to take this engine out. It's the only way forward. It's the easiest thing to do. Because we have to do our pushrod tubes as well, too, now at this stage. So you're talking about doing pushrod tubes, changing the inlet manifold, changing the carburetor. I mean, I suppose it depends on how far Darren wants to go with this. I mean, I could probably, probably try and patch everything up and make it work. But is it the right way? No. This is a cheaper way, yeah. But either way, I mean, you're going to have an engine that's leaking oil. Because in order to do the push rod tubes properly, you have to take out the engine. How oh, pain in the face this is. All right, let me do a bit of Googling. Okay, so an AS engine is a uh, later 1600 so this is a 1600 engine not a 1300 okay so um yeah it's uh, from 73 to 80 the ad engine would have been up to 73 um so uh, that's what the story is with that but anyway right so at least we know what kind of engine it is and um, it's a larger engine which is which is nice um how far can i go in this uh on this job without kind of taking the engine out well, as I said, when I if I had the engine on my garage floor uh, with the um, uh, you know, and I was able to take the heads off and have a look at them, uh, see what condition the heads are in, see what condition the piston bores are in, um, give it a good servicing, and get it all spruced up 100%, and refit it to the car. Now that'd be the way I'd go. So. Okay, right. So now it's list time. So what I need to do now is I need to actually have a think about what way we need to. Uh, what way we need to do this because um, it's uh, yeah I think I'm only going to end up cutting corners and cutting corners is not what I like to do um, 
so it's it's definitely a kind of a um, it's a bit of a project. But there again, Darren did tell me it was a bit of a project. Um, let's have a look around the rest of the car. So I would say it probably needs an exhaust. Um, we'll have to change the gearbox oil as well too in the process. Um, handbrake is uh, not connected and uh, broken. The back brakes are seized on. Um, let's, uh, let's have a look under the bonnet. Quality sound right there, folks. Right, our brake fluid reservoir is empty, which explains why our pedal's going to the floor. So, uh, we've obviously got a leak there somewhere. Um, so, you're talking full brake overhaul, uh, engine. Um, probably a myriad bushings and ball joints and stuff like that as well too. I think what we need to do is we need to focus on the engine first of all. Okay, right, so here's the plan. Um, I've spoken to Darren and um, get it running, make it safe. Basically that's what we're looking. So um, I'm going to stop short of dropping the engine. I'm not, I'm not doing that. Uh, personally I thought, to be honest with you, we were at the point where I was thinking pull the engine out and get a known good second hand engine that hasn't been messed with as much as this one has. But um, you know, look, I know this engine can be started and uh, I think what I'll do now is I'll dicky up the carburetor and get the distributor all cleaned up um, get out, make sure all the flyweights are moving freely and that, change all the fuel lines, give it a good service, adjust the tappets and um, see what we can do uh, with the engine and then we'll get into doing the uh, doing the brakes as well too. Um, may as well throw some gearbox oil into it as well too in the process. Okay, so right, so the first thing now, uh, the next thing to do now is to do a list and to um, get, uh, get that sorted out. Um, because obviously there's a lot of parts we still need to buy anyway. Um, the intake manifold, to be honest with you, yeah, I probably could, if I, was, if I was to stay at it, I probably could get it off, but, you know, again, that's not the ethos of this car, let's just say, you know, it's kind of, um, it's looking like that, you know. Um, I now know what the owner kind of wants a bit more from it, like, you know, because I, I sort of said to him, you know, look, it isn't as, you know, it, it needs a lot of attention, but do you want to put that attention into it? Um, or do you want to just get it kind of safe and running? And uh, he sort of said, no, just get it safe and running, and we'll leave it at that. So anyway, right, the, the, uh, let's, uh, let's button back up the intake manifold and do that list. Okay, before I go, um, I want to have a look inside the carburetor and just see how uh, piggy it actually is, because just looking down the throat of it, it looks pretty bad, and I'd say the jets are probably all clogged up. So that could have contributed to our poor running, when it, or the fact that it wouldn't start, for that matter. Um, so, uh, if we uh, did this is one of those crap knockoff uh, Brosol carburetors, um, rather than an original Solex. So that means the carb has been replaced at some point in the in the past. The Brosol ones are not that great, to be honest with you. Not from my own experience, anyway. five screws and then that, that basically allows us to take off the cover of the float ball and uh, we're going to need a new spring for it as well too. Okay, there's the float ball gasket. Let's take out the float and have a look and see how we're looking inside. Come on, get out. I'm going to turn it upside down because fuel is going to pour everywhere, obviously. Okay, it's not as piggy inside as I expected it to be. Um, yeah, the throat is pretty uh, mucky, but the actual... Like, if we take out the... Uh, look at this lead and let's see. This looks like it's probably fairly well locked. 
This is the emulsion tube. It's not blocked. the idle jets around here so take them out and we'll have a look at them see how they're looking of course we could do that if we could find a, a socket One of the uh, things that happened to me many years ago when I had a 1974 VW bus was I was in, um, stuck in heavy traffic, driving back from college at the time. And um, when I was on my way back from college, I was on a particularly busy road called the M50 in Ireland. Anybody, any Irish people will know the M50 only too well. Probably have nightmares uh, about it. And uh, let's see, now it's that. That was blocked. Okay, that's good. So we had a blocked jet there straight away. Right, so pop that back in. Um, and I was pull I pulled up before they had the um, big interchange at the M1 uh, to M50 interchange there. I pulled up uh, at the roundabout um, and I was stuck in traffic and the engine died on me, okay? Much to the annoyance of all the other commuters. And uh, I used the start motor to get up onto the lay-by in the middle of the road. And um, what, uh, what it turned out to be at a later stage, and I wasn't as experienced back then as I am now with VWs, uh, it turned out to be a, um, the needle valve and the float bowl was sticking because it would start again after 10 minutes and run for a few minutes and then it would die again. Okay, that one wasn't blocked. The other one was. That certainly wouldn't contribute to good running anyway, having a blocked jet there. So, let's nip that back up. Okay. So I am going to take the carb out and just uh, empty the float bowl. Okay, so uh, now we need to take out our um, main jet, which is in the bottom here. So 13mm plug comes out first. So, undo that. Um, uh, the upshot of the whole uh, situation with the, uh, the, um, the the van dying on the M50 was I had to get a tow truck. I managed to limp it onto a kind of an area where I was able to get a uh, a tow truck, so I sort of got it into a safe location. But uh, one of my few uh, breakdown stories. Now, here's our main jet. Not blocked. Clear it. Okay. Let's go on, so. So we have a we haven't got a blocked main anyway. I didn't think we did in fairness, it's just worth checking while we have the carb off like this. Now that goes there. Yeah, the, the adjustment screws for the carburetor, by the way, is that, uh, that's the idle one, and then the small one there is your uh, mixture screw. So, just in case you were ever wondering, something to have a look at, but you only start fiddling with that after you've done everything else. So, you know, once you're 100% happy that everything else in the engine is right, then go fiddling with them. But don't just go twiddling screwdrivers left, right, and center. If you have your timing is off, or your valves aren't set properly, or any of that kind of carry on, you're never going to get it right. No amount of twiddling is going to help your help your cause. Okay, for some reason my phone decided, or my, my phone, my camera decided to um, 
have a bit of a notion and uh, it, uh, it died on me and um, yeah, so I lost one of my scenes that I had recorded, which is kind of annoying. But anyway, I kind of got into, uh, I have now, I've now got the carburetor reassembled um, loosely. Um, I will be taking it back apart again just to give it a deep clean. I checked the distributor um, advance mechanism and I'll just show you that there again because it didn't uh, want to play ball, the camera as I said. So if you hold the shaft, you can rotate that uh, against some spring tension. What we'll do is we'll change the points and um, there's some damaged wiring on the side of the, the, the distributor there as well too. So that needs to be um, that needs to be addressed anyway. So we'll stick a new set of points in it. Uh, so that's one service item. Clean the carb, ser uh, clean the carb, change the points, uh, adjust the valves, uh, check the timing um, we will uh, button everything back up that I've disconnected here on this as well too, throw a new uh, alternator belt on it and change the oil obviously as well too and um, we'll, uh, we'll put a new carb base gasket onto it as well because obviously the, that RTV is not supposed to be there. See if we can do something about the damaged stud, um, new air ducts, new um, uh, new rear tinware, new air cleaner, uh, then, we'll, then we'll get on to doing the gearbox and then we will uh, just service the gearbox, like basically change the oil in it and then we will do the uh, brakes and the brakes are a pain in the face because there is a big stupid 36mm hub nut in the middle which needs to be loosened in order to get the dr drums off and we will have to try and get at that, uh, get that removed and usually they're tighter than a tight tin, insert, insert suitable simile here. Um, so we uh, we need to obviously address that. Uh, so uh, yeah, because there's no fluid in it, it could be the uh, flexible pipes to come down from the uh, reservoir down to the um, master cylinder. It could be the master cylinder itself is leaking. It could be a slave cylinder. It could be a hydraulic pipe is burst or damaged or perished or something like that. So we need to go through all the brakes and find out what is exactly going on. Then we need to address the handbrake. We need to replace the handbrake cables because they are bunched. So uh, yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a project, but. Um, Nonetheless, we will uh, we will persevere and we'll get this car back on the road. So uh, anyway, look, thanks a lot for watching, folks, and um, we will uh, we'll pick this up again in a future video. Uh, there's plenty more to be done, so um, don't forget to like and subscribe, and um, I will uh, show you how we get on. Thanks for watching.